Jews supposed to be global only when they live without power. Jewish power become most important. What distinguishes Zionism from anything else, the Jewish power. Those who rise to kill you, we kill them. We change Jewish morality. We no longer think about Jewish morality as universal morality. Real politik. They come to kill us, we kill them. They come to our borders, we do what we need to do. We think like a sovereign state. Sovereignty informs everything. And sovereignty in form of everything, it doesn't mean that we become pedestrian and just like people who are raising oranges and so on as we did in the beginning. We can also be global, which is a genius. We can be the high-tech nation that traveled all over the world, including to Palo Alto to build America and to be second on NASDAQ. And at the same time, we can be warriors. What an achievement. The most triumphant moment in Jewish history. A Jewish state, Jewish sovereignty, that everybody who hates us, so they hate us. Israel didn't deal even with anti-Semitism to work itself out. How it will work itself out? Abraham Accords. And that is also important in the current context because uh, often it is said by uh, by Arabs that we are also Semites, so we cannot be anti-Semitic, right? But if we look at the history of the term, then and it is a European development in European understanding, Semites were Jews, and that is a, their replacement. Uh, and the reason was that the Jews, the real Semites that were present in most of the European continent at the time, had already been a problem before. Well, this is another example. This is a Philadelphia food uh, festival. And they showed up with this truck, the Moshava Israel-inspired cuisine. Even being Israel-inspired was problematic because the Moshava, Moshava Israel-inspired cuisine food truck was asked to park in a different parking lot. And of course, everybody said, oh, we're very sorry. We didn't realize, of course, right? They made their necessary corrections. But it's all symptomatic of the same thing. The Jew in his particularity is not welcome because the Jew in his particularity is saying, your universalism is false. It's a false universalism because that, that's why I said earlier about our sense of privilege that when we do have that understanding of anti-Semitism and how it functions socially, we have a responsibility to other groups to fight. In terms of how people approach this, the teaching of anti-Semitism, it's a really, relatively new field in itself. There is no, if you go to Jewish studies departments, uh, there really isn't a class on the history of anti-Semitism. There's a class on the Holocaust, of course, and we've spoken about this at length, which is that what people believe is, you know, there's no, you know, anti-Semitism died with, with the rest of the Jews, kind of, and the Holocaust was put to rest. Um, and I'll never forget this because I, I went to a Jewish day school, and I, uh, high school, and I, I said, can you, can I pilot this course on the history of anti-Semitism? And, and the dean of the school said, there's no need for your class because we have a robust Holocaust program. So, right, th that's an issue. 